Welcome to Hot Topic. This time I'm talking to Councillor Philip Jackson, the leader of the Conservative Group on North East Lincolnshire Council. Philip, welcome. Thank you very much Thank for you, coming yeah. in. Uh, we can't really start this one off uh, without thinking about the events of last week and all the sexual harassment revelations mm. in, have revealed in national politics, Pestminster, as it's been uh, yes, called. Yes. Uh, are you aware of any uh, th of that sort of business of sexual harassment going on in any of the parties, in, in any of the parts of North East Lincolnshire Council? Well, not that I'm aware of. I mean, clearly that sort of behaviour is totally unacceptable, and um, if it is happening, we need to make sure it's stopped, but we need to keep it in proportion as well, I think. But I'm not aware of any problems in the within the political parties within North East Lincolnshire or indeed within the council itself. But, uh, you know, if anything does come to light, we need to make sure it gets dealt with. If people were worried, if they were concerned, uh, <coughs> would, do you feel confident that the mechanisms are there, that there is somebody they can talk to, they can report to, uh, who is senior to them, uh, and that that will not harm their careers, that that will not be possibly even the alleged perpetrator? I mean, yes, I think so. As far as I'm aware, there are, there are processes in place. Good. Let's move on then from that uh, from last week's topic, as it were. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was this. Uh, your uh, council's chief executive, Rob Walsh, poor man, finds himself lumbered with a second job, possibly here as the uh, also chief executive of the clinical commissioning group. How mm. good an idea is that? We've just seen a, a, a non-ministerial experience, a non-soldierly experience man made secretary of state for defence. What would a non-medical man be doing uh, running a clinical commissioning group? Well, I, th I think it's important that um, the local health organisations and the council work more closely together because we've clearly got uh, adult social care, um, which if it's not managed properly and, and doesn't uh, link in properly with the, the local health organisations, does lead to bed blocking and problems for, for patients, it means they don't have a seamless movement through the health um, area within, within the locality. So I think, I think greater cooperation between councils and clinical commissioning groups is actually beneficial. But that, that doesn't and, mean that their leadership should meet at the apex, as it were. Well, no, but my understanding was that um, Rob Walsh, our chief executive, um, was already spending a fair amount of time on uh, that, that sort of business as a result of the work that was being done uh, in talking to the clinical commissioning group and dealing with adult social care issues. So I think if we can try and get more cooperation, that's the way to improve the patient experience. It's the way to improve the efficiency of health and adult social care services within the area uh, and save money as well, which I think is important. How about accountability? Who is he accountable to uh, for health? Presumably he's accountable to the council for all the business of the council and, accounts, and, and, and accountable to the clinical commissioning group's own stakeholders, as it were. So he has uh, two masters, as it were. Well, from a legal viewpoint, of course, um, both of the organisations remain separate and have their own respons legal responsibilities and um, uh, accountabilities. But I, but I think uh, sharing a chief executive not only uh, saves money, but also helps the cooperation and, and bringing together the two organisations. So, so I do support that. It saves money, so you're, you're getting to do twice as much work for the same money? Well. Uh, my understanding was he, he had a modest increase in his salary as well to take account of that. Um, but nevertheless, overall, I think it's a beneficial move. Let's move on to the more obvious brutalities of politics. Boundary changes are looming, parliamentary boundary changes, but yes. also council boundary changes. Um, what, what impact are the, are the ward uh, or suggestions, the boundary commission suggestions for ward changes in North East Lincolnshire? What are the, what's the political impact there? Well, are you, are you talking about the parliamentary boundaries now? Well, I'm t talking about the, 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 the local politics boundaries first, because I know there's been big changes suggested in Hull. Mm. What, what, are the, what are the equivalents there in Grimsby? Well, I'm not sure at the moment there are any proposals on the table for changing the, uh, the local government boundaries within North East Lincolnshire. And in the parliamentary boundaries? Well, the parliamentary boundary will result in, uh, if, if the Boundary Commission's proposals go through, will result in, in two new constituencies um, um, take, uh, which, which, will, which will in effect split the, the constituency of Grimsby and some of the Grimsby will, some of Cleethorpes will move into Grimsby. 
Yes, North, there'll be Grimsby North and Grimsby South, but yes. what will be the political consequences for that? I mean, I know that the Boundary Commission is very keen not to gerrymander, but it's also very keen that we don't have a democracy unless each of us is represented by the same number of MPs. Each MP represents about the same number of people, so there's that equality of representation. Mm. So they want equality of numbers in the, in the constituencies. What does that do, say, to the new constituency of Hull North, which is also going to stretch quite a long way east, mm. as it's suggested? Uh, is that going to make that a much more, it's good news for you, a much more conservative constituency? Well, I haven't had a look at the boundaries for the uh, constituencies north of the river, but no, clearly, no, no, sorry, clearly uh, it will, me, clearly, I, uh, my, my mistake, clearly I meant, will affect um, uh, North East Lincolnshire and Grimsby and Cleethorpes. I meant Grimsby North, yes. forgive me, Philip, my, um, my fault, but the, the, that, that new Grimsby North constituency is going to stretch much further east and presumably be much more Tory. Well, it is. I think, we're, I think we will probably end up in a situation in North East Lincolnshire uh, based on uh, recent election results of having two more marginal conservative seats. Um, so I think, I think if we look at the figures, probably at the 2015 election at least, both of those seats would have been conservative. Uh, but you think that the Hull South, uh, forgive me, Grimsby South constituency as well would also be more marginal? Because uh, that seems to be fairly safe with Martin because at the moment is a conservative seat. His majority went up. So mm -hmm. you think that that would, be, uh, that would come back into play rather more? Well, yes, I think so, because some of the, uh, the conservative parts, more conservative parts of that constituency will be moving into the new Grimsby North uh, constituency. What are your chances? You've got local elections on North East Lincolnshire Council next May. What are your chances of winning? Well, I think we've got a good chance of winning uh, next year. It all depends on the political environment at the time, of course, and politics is moving so quickly at the moment that uh, anything could have happened by next May. Well, but but, but, the, lo but the, current, the current local authority, Labour-controlled local authority, is, is quite unpopular and is uh, uh, not going about um, making decisions in, in, in the most uh, popular way that, and, and keeping people on board in the locality. And I think uh, with the right campaign, the Conservatives have got a good chance of winning seats and taking control of the council. If there were confident Conservatives going into an election, though, that that's, should be um, flashing red lights, shouldn't it? Because there were confident Conservatives very possibly even hubristic conservatives for mm. the general election, that turned into a bit of a disaster. Well, we need to make sure that we, that we in, in the uh, run-up to the local elections next year, that we're focusing on the areas that are important to the population in the area. And I'm not sure that we did that in the general election um, earlier on this year. Are you massively helped by the fact that UKIP no longer has uh, raison d'etre? No, 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 it, it does, has no reason to exist, and that Grimsby and Cleethorpes were North East Lincolnshire was some of the most powerful UKIP Brexit voting areas in the referendum. Now that that uh, drain on possible Conservative votes isn't there, shouldn't that just be? A, shouldn't it be a walkover for you? Well, it should. Be, it should be a help to us because, as you know, we've already had four members of the local UKIP um, party come over to us. Four elected members of UKIP go over to us in the last. To 18 months or two years, um, but of course, Labour also took seats from uh, in some of the traditional Labour wards. So I think it's a bit difficult to predict at the you moment mean, how UKIP, those UKIP had taken seats yes. from uh, votes from Labour in the traditional. Indeed, Labour wards. yes, yeah. So uh, th and those seats come up for re-election next year, next May. And I think at the moment it's a bit difficult to predict where those votes will go. But we will be campaigning hard to win those UKIP votes over to the Conservatives. You mentioned that you'd had defectors coming over from UKIP to joining the Conservative Party. Have there ever, is there any possibility of other people defecting over to the Conservative Party? Might control change without there being another election, before there's another election? Well, we're always open to members of other parties joining the Conservatives if they share our views and principles and want to come over and join us. So yes, we would welcome other from other parties. And in what circumstances would you turn somebody away? Well, we would have to look at each individual on their merits and we would decide on that basis. There's a, uh, there was a, a few weeks ago, there was a protest outside the, the town hall um, about, as you say, the fact that the present Labour administration is unpopular. With that sort of uh, uh, resistance, could you not force a, a, a vote of confidence? Well, again, that's, that's a possibility. It, it would depend on um, whether or not the other parties were prepared to support us, of course. And... Uh, bearing in mind the fact that you know we're only about six months away from elections anyway, um, even if we took control of the council, I'm not sure uh, how much difference we could make over a six-month period. So I think we, I think it's, it, we'd have to be careful about so making a decision to do that, and it might be better to wait and, and, and put our our manifesto out to the to the public, 
and aim to take control properly and fully next year. So it's a matter of tactics, as it were, and timing. I think it is, yes. Always important in politics. Yeah, well, I'm, sh I'm sure it is. Thank you, Philip. We're going to have to stop there for a moment, I'm afraid. Join me again in a couple of minutes. I'll still be with Philip Jackson. Welcome back to Hot Topic. I'm still with Councillor Philip Jackson, leader of the Conservative group of, uh, in North East Lincolnshire Council, the Conservative group in opposition. Philip, we were just talking about political tactics here. Indeed. And you, rather than force the issue now, you'd wait, rather wait till May and the, uh, the next local elections. You're confident about uh, victory then? Well, I, th I think if we, if we have the right campaign, we make sure that we address the right issues which are of concern to local people at the moment, we can make significant inroads, yes. Let's try to address a few of those issues. Um, this uh, regional, or this North East Lincolnshire Regeneration Partnership with uh, NG, as it's now called, it used to be Balfour BT, I yes. think it had another name in the middle, that's been going since 2010. It's worth about £155 million over 10 years to NG. Um, how is that working to the advantage of the council? Because it seems to be making lots of money for NG, uh, who are advising the council to spend lots of money with NG. How, do, how does the council benefit from that? Well, I'm not sure that all of their advice uh, entailed spending money with NG, but you have to bear in mind the, why we originally went into the partnership back in 2010, and that was because we were finding it difficult to attract people with the, with the skills that we needed to the area to be able to deliver regeneration and, en and, and the engineering and highway services that we need. So bringing in a, 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 a private sector partner, that was a thinking behind that. Um, so we weren't very good at that before we went into partnership with NG and I think the situation has improved but we do need to make sure that we keep the partnership under scrutiny and make sure that we look for uh, improvements wherever we can and that we are getting value for money. That situation has changed though, that situation in 2010 perhaps there wasn't that much available expertise locally. Uh, but now this is renewable energy town, this is infrastructure town, mm. this is a town full of engineers, full of experts, full of people who understand infrastructure. Do we still need this deal with energy, this rather costly deal with energy? Well, um, again, you know, I think we need to, we need to keep it under review, uh, bearing in mind the fact we were looking in particular for highways engineers, civil engineers. I'm not necessarily convinced that there uh, are still a, a surfeit of those in the area at the moment. So. Uh, you know, again, we do need to keep the partnership under review. My understanding is there has been a, f a full review of how the partnership is working and that the results of that will be in the public arena shortly. And the scrutiny panel that I chair on the council, the economy scrutiny panel, on a quarterly basis uh, does scrutinise the, uh, the performance and the outcomes from, from NG and will continue to do that and continue to press for improved performance. You mentioned a lot of civil engineers and road engineers, transport engineers. Uh, the toll bar roundabout, Waltham toll bar roundabout, is to be changed into a, a traffic light junction. Mm. Uh, this is not particularly popular with uh, a lot of the people in that part of the, uh, of the borough. Uh, and it's going to take eight months you get, clearly, we don't have enough road engineers if it takes eight months to change a roundabout into a set of traffic lights. Well, I don't, I don't think it's just unpopular with people in the locality. I think it's recognised across the whole of North East Lincolnshire as not being um, a, a, very, uh, a very good proposal. And, in, and indeed, I know there have been a number of public meetings about it recently. Uh, and, and it's very clear from the outcome of those meetings that the, the public generally is, is opposed to it. I, I, th I think it's a mistake. I think we should be retaining a roundabout there with some sort of part-time traffic lights which would operate only at peak times. Uh, it's only two or three hours each day when there's a problem at that roundabout. And, and clearly an eight-month period of time if the works do go ahead for those works to be completed is totally unacceptable. It's going to lead to, um, to congestion and chaos in the southern part of the town, there's no doubt about it. Were the Conservatives to take back power in May, would you stop it? Well, it would depend on how far down the process, of course, we got of, of um, letting the contracts. The work is not due to start until June, but that would certainly be something we would be trying to stop. We'd be would, trying, would, we, 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 would want, we would want to be looking at an alternative way of dealing with the, 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 the problems of, of, of of helping pedestrians at that would, location, would, would, which is that, the main issue. Would that not be a good reason to try to force the issue with a vote of confidence uh, in order to, to, to nip it in the bud? 
Well, yes, you could, you could use that as an argument, but again, there's, there's no guarantee, of course, even then that we'll be able to stop it. Let's talk about, a little bit about housing. Uh, the, uh, the, the local plan involves building a great deal more housing, uh, but there's um, a possibility of another housing development outside that around Scartho, between Scartho and Waltham. Um, and the Conservative government, the central government, has said that it wants to build a great deal many more homes. Mm. So would you review the, I know last time we spoke, we spoke a great deal about the local plan, would you review the local plan in order to increase the amount of housing, not just to house incomers uh, serving the renewable energy industry, but simply to create more affordable housing for the people of North East Lincolnshire who can't afford to buy their own homes? Yes, it is, a, it is very important that we have more affordable housing. And I think uh, utilising some of the brownfield sites, in the t in particularly in the centre of Grimsby, uh, as, as sites for affordable housing is, is very important. And, that, and that's, that is a key part of the new local plan, which is currently going through the final phases of its approval. Is the plan developing, though, to increase the number of new housing that's going to be built, brownfield or, or, or greenfield, uh, to increase that as the uh, national policy uh, and uh, recognises that more housing is needed and as the simple in, in absurdity of the inflation of house prices recognises that more housing is needed? Well, the, 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 the local plan with regard to housing already includes a need for affordable housing and uh, all developers, when they put forward plans for new, new, new housing estates, uh, have to either include affordable housing within it or a contribution towards affordable housing elsewhere. So that, that's already taken account of in the new local plan. I don't mean particularly that there has to be specifically affordable housing within the development, but just that more housing mm. generally is a matter of supply and demand. The greater the, the supply, then the, the lower the prices will be and the more people who can afford perhaps even to own their own homes, not necessarily well, yes, just on an affordable model. No, but we also have to remember that house prices compared with uh, house prices nationally oh, I know. are already very low in North East Lincolnshire. But so so and, is income very low and, in and North And we're already seeing that that a, a lot of uh, planning permissions are being given um, for housing sites, but no, no start is being made on the development. So we already have a lot of permissions, but not a lot of building going on. And I think, for me, there has to be a question mark about how much demand there is in the local economy for housing. The, there's been a great deal of talk about regional devolution in the last, uh, last, last year or so, really, I suppose. Lincolnshire devolution, Yorkshire <coughs> devolution. Yorkshire seems to be in a, a frightful Machiavellian mess. Uh, what's your view of the idea of a, a greater Lincolnshire, a, a mayorality or some other form of, uh, of, of, of separate, not separation, but of, 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 mm -hmm. a, of an extra layer of local government covering the whole of Lincolnshire? Well, I, I still think it's unfortunate that the, um, that the plans for devolution across greater Lincolnshire that we were talking about this time last year um, aren't actually now going to go ahead. I think that would have been would have been a benefit for Lincolnshire. Would have helped to and bring the local authorities together. Lincolnshire County County that and, put the uh, yes, unfortunately it was yes, on it was indeed yes. Uh, it would it would have brought more funding into the area and would have helped cooperation between the, the different authorities and would have led to greater efficiencies, I believe. Um, but if we can't have that, I would certainly be. Uh, um, sympathetic towards looking at some sort of new unitary authority, maybe within the northern part of Lincolnshire. The two unitary authorities of North and North East Lincolnshire coming together, maybe with East and West Lindsay. But the e economically coherent unit here isn't Lincolnshire or Northern Lincolnshire, as it were. It is the Humber and the Humber ports and the infrastructure and the support services that go mm. to serve them. Would, would that not be, I know nobody wants to bring back Humberside, for emotional reasons that I've never entirely understood, but, but it, would that not be, is there not an argument that the political unity should coincide with the economic unity? Well, you, you, at the end of the day, with, 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 lo with local government units, you have to have something that uh, uh, has public support, and I don't believe, as you rightly say, there would be public support for going back to the county of Humberside. It is important that we continue to cooperate across the Humber, and we are doing that. We've got the, the Humber... Uh, um, Local Enterprise Partnership, which is, which is very robust, very strong, and which is which is bringing together the the economic development activities within the Humber. So it's important that we continue to be active within that. Um, but I think, from a public viewpoint, you, you know, a Northern Lincolnshire Authority or a Greater Lincolnshire Devolution offering is something which would engender public support. I just want to win. finally uh, on the state of the Conservative Party as it is uh, since the general election, much weakened of course uh, by uh, being now a minority government. 
In Northeastern Country Council, you don't have much 17th century politics going on, but the party nationally in the House of Commons is now in alliance with the Democratic Unionist Party, mm. uh, who are just about climbing out of the 17th century. Uh, they are a sort of Protestant Taliban. They have been associated with paramilitary forces, a third force, Ulster resistance. They have advocated creationism to be taught in schools. They're very anti-gay. There was once a slogan that they ran saying, save Ulster from sodomy. Not a sentence I ever expected to be saying on this programme. Uh, they're anti-abortion. A chap called Sammy Wilson last year, a member of parliament uh, on a BBC programme, endorsed a member of the audience who said, get ethnics out of Northern Ireland and they'd like to bring back the death penalty. How comfortable as a Conservative are you that your party is in government and alliance with these people? Well, I, I certainly wouldn't be comfortable with a lot of those views, speaking personally, but I think um, if it helps the, the Conservatives nationally to remain in power and to be a, be a strong for, for a, a strong voice in the negotiating chamber with regard to Brexit, I think it's of benefit to the That's country as a whole. power at any choice, though, really, if these are the bedfellows. Well, I, again, you know, as I've said, Hugh, I would have some concern uh, about those, particularly as a scientist with an organisation that um, is talking about creationism and thinks that the, the Earth was created only 6,000 years ago, if that is what they do believe, um, well, I would have some concern about that. But I think it's important that we mem remember that we think about the benefits to the nation as a whole. I, well, I think on that moment of consensus about creationism, Philip, we're going to have to stop, I'm afraid. Thanks, thank, you. thank you very much for coming and join me next week for another one.